kicking it, but today we kind of want to get into a little bit of your background, how things started, how you got into the sport, as well as some of the business side of, of just being in the NBA and just what to expect and also just the mindset of being a player in a competitive sport like that. It's, it's, it's been a journey for sure. Um, real quick, I mean, I've, NBA-wise, I've, I played 10 years in the NBA. I uh, started here in Portland. Uh, honestly, I fell in love with the great Northwest and really didn't want to leave, so uh, that's why I'm here now. Um, did my 10 years and now kind of just expanding the game of basketball, uh, playing overseas right now, I'm in South Korea. Um, I just signed back up another year for them. So, oh, you did? Um, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Nice okay. There. You know, it, it's, it's been a long time. I think it's like my 15th year yeah. professionally, yeah, yeah, yeah. something okay. like that. So. Well, let's take it back a little bit to the beginning, like how you got into the sport. Where are you from? Or when were you born and raised at? Uh, born and raised in Maryland, uh, Clinton, Maryland, born and raised. Mom and dad were in the Air Force. Uh, so I, I really didn't get to much of the traveling. My sister did most of the traveling um, as a military brat. Um, I lived in Germany for like four years when I was young, but oh, I really don't remember much of that. But um, I mean, other than that, I, I started playing basketball when I was four years old. Um, what kind of got you into the sport? Do you remember? My sister, my dad, my, my dad always coached my sister. And it was either, you know, I'd run around with my mom or stay in the gym all day. Right. So I was like, your I'm sister played professionally as well, right? She did. She did. She, um, I, I literally followed her blueprint, her footsteps. I, I wanted to go to D1 like her. I wanted to go to pro, pros like her and, you know, make a career and a life out of it. That's pretty so, intense, man. That, I mean, like, hoop really kind of runs in the family. It's kind of, like, ingrained in y'all, right? It does. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's definitely something that, you know, as a family we cherish and, you know, we, we try to keep, you know, simmering down. My son, she got two kids, you know, so we, we definitely try to keep it going as a family. That's what's up, man. You, you went to uh, you played for uh, Villanova University, right? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. like, kind of talk, talk about that time where let's take it back to like 2008 or 2009, where it's Ooh. like really starting to heat up for you, and you, you you start to see that draft coming near. Like, what what were those games like, and kind of how what was your mindset at the time? Honestly, at that point in time, basketball was just literally my world. Yeah. You know, I, I I went to Villanova. You know, I had school, I had classes, and everything. It was still, you know, kind of basketball first. Like you have to understand that. Yep. And at that point, you know, you, you have to you have to learn to balance, you know, you know, life and and you know, a sport that you know could potentially take off, make your life better, you and your family better. You know, so at that point, you know, you just continue to try to be around it and be more, you know, in tune to what's going on with the, you know, with basketball with, with life like that that's the, that's the biggest thing right now balance balance, balance is definitely key because I, I know there's a lot of people that i grew up with that have just like major talent mm -hmm. and just like there's a lot of real life that can just hit you at any moment where they can really like change your path what do you say is like some of the best advice or just like key things to consider when you want a journey like that towards like the nba or something like that just trying to stay on the right path whether it's just being troubled or growing up in the struggle you know, I don't want to sound cliche, keep God first. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to pray, listen to your, your yeah. mom, your dad, your, the people that, you know, have your best interest. There, there's always going to be a people around you that want something from you, that wants to be, you know, in your pocket or, you know, right next to you for the cameras or whatever. But it's, it's hard to see at the time because the lights are bright and everyone can stand in the shadows. But stay on your path and listen to the right people. Keep those people around you that want the best for you, that, you, that know, you know. Did you go through that? Like, did you have people, like, on your circle that were there just because you were in the NBA and you had all this stuff around you? I did, but I also had a great, close, you know, family. Um, my sister, mom, dad, you know, we were always the people. We were put as well. You know, we have group, family, text, everything like that. But we ha I had family come in and want to, you know, figure out a way to yeah. get in. But... Yeah, you hard up pretty much. It, it is. It, 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 it's hard because at the same time, like you have, you know, your uncles, your cousins, people that are they're really they're, they're blood family. But at the same time, they really only want one thing from you. Yeah, you that's, know, that's what they stop talking to you for a whole year. Type thing. Wow. That's a difficult thing that, that a lot of people face when it comes to anything successful. Just like starting to see people change around you. They, a lot of people come up to you saying that you the one that changed. But a lot of time it's not though. A lot of time it's really the the environment around you that just creates the image that that they just don't understand exactly. That's you know, funny you say that because I don't know who said it or I heard it from somewhere. They were like, um, "It's funny you say I changed, but when I didn't have money, 
she never asked me for money. So the first thing that changed is you. Yeah. Now they want some change. Now you want some. Now you want some. I got, yeah. Back on a positive note, though, like around that time, like, what is it? What does it look like when you're being scouted? To, like for maybe like somebody in the room who is like in high school or in, in college that are trying to hoop, they're trying to be serious. Like, what does it look like when that opportunity is on the table to really go to the league? Just like it is in a movie. <laughs> <It's a> movie. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, it is. Um, you know, you got you get all the letters coming in by the box load. You know, for colleges. You know, uh, there's this is in high school, I should say. But that, that's where it starts. You know, you get all the box loads of letters and. You know, the coaches coming in, the news, press, you know, you're in all the local papers. So now you're just building up. You get to college and now you're on TV, you're on ESPN, you're making highlights, you know, and, you know. And now I can't, even, I can't even imagine that. Like, when I started, we had Facebook. You know what I mean? So, like, and you had to be in college to get Facebook. And that was, like, our only, like, real social outlet. I mean, you know, MySpace, all that. Yeah. Don't let me date myself, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I know. I was wondering about that. It, 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 social media, you know, obviously wasn't prominent. You right. know what I mean? So now we got a kid that has a million followers. You know, way more. Yeah. People know him way more than me. Plus, you they know? can make cool little highlight reels and TikTok and post it. And that's how and continue to build your brand. Yeah. And, you know, make your money now. You know, it's it's, it's a lot to go into it, and I, and I honestly. Like, uh, I'm glad you guys brought this up because, like, I, I would love for more colleges and college coaches to kind of put their kids in situations where they're making millions of dollars mm-hmm. in college. You got to put them in class and teach them how to manage it and work their money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. today, like, they're, the way of holding money now is way different from what it was for your parents. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, their knowledge of money is totally different mm-hmm. than what it is now. So, you have to teach these kids how to manage it and how not to burn it up before it's all, you know. That's very common in, in, uh, in sports, especially in African, African-American uh, communities. For sure. Because we, a lot of us don't come from money. We don't. So when we start to see these massive not, not, like numbers and checks coming in, bro, it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I know what I want to do with it. <laughs> I want to go down to the to the dealership and give me something nice. Do that immediately, <laughs> but like, you know, but it's but, a lot of other things you can do and yeah. other ways to, to, to buy this car without, you know, yeah. Throwing out cash here, boom. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's a lot of avenues that with money comes across. Did you have a, did you have a sense of that, or when you first got your big paycheck, or did you like did you did you have I, some kind of accountant or tax person already, or something? I like did. So I had a team. I've always had a team. Oh, um, cool. But at the same time, I came and I was lucky. I had parents that, um, again, their way of method was old. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, you know, I stuck with it. You know, use the money in the bank and let it build. Yeah. 20, 30 years ago, that would have been great, you know what I mean? But now, it's different, you mm-hmm. know? So, um, maybe 10 years ago or something, I kind of, you know, switched off and kind of went to the new world, let my team actually work and, you know, do that stuff. So. What kind of team members do you have to kind of tap on the shoulder to kind of bring in to, like, help manage that money? And what kind I of mean, advice do you think? And trust, too. Yeah, I mean, trust obviously, it's team, trust, trust <laughs> and, you know, um, you have your team, your, your team that you want, and you audit. You all, all, always have a second team audit your your main guys. Like you, you trust those guys, you run it with them, blah blah blah. But at the same time, that's your money. Yeah. And the audit. Plus, it's not even like something that you bad. Maybe he's like a mistake. You know, all right. I mean, yeah, they could have missed. You know, they could have yeah. missed five dollars, six dollars here. You know, I mean, go get that money. That's my yeah, money. That's I want it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't care what it is. I want it. So once you started playing in the league, you you first were drafted in 2009 to the Trailblazers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, shout out the Trailblazers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the first practice feeling like when you like you in the league? It's official now. It's, it's not even. It's, it's surreal. Like you have to understand. Like all your life, like one, like your your main goal is to be in the NBA, to be one of the top 300 guys in the you know the world. As they, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm real. You walk into the gym. I remember my first. I walked into the gym. Me and my pops, and I was like a week or so early because I was getting my house or whatever, getting ready. Yeah. And I go into the gym to check it out. Brandon Roy sitting there working out with this guy. Yeah. Turned to me, hey, what's up? He was shaking my hand, blah, blah, blah. You want to work out? Uh, now? Like now? Like, like right here? <laughs> right now, you, yeah, go get some gear. All right. First day, be Roy. Hey, you know what I mean? Just get it in. And ever since then, you know, it's just it's things like that. You know what I mean? Like, guys want you to get better. You know, it, it, it is, you know, you just be Roy. Right. So, Working out with you kind of like you know the star set. Some, some you don't expect. Well, you know the market always <laughs> come in an hour and a half later. You know, working yeah, out. Yeah, so crazy. You like, 
Exactly. I've seen them on TV. Exactly. You're one of them. You, yeah. you know you're going to play with them, but it's like, man, they really here. Like, they really here for me. Yeah, at what point did you finally feel like you were kind of settled in and, like, I don't know if that ever gets, like, 100% old because uh, every other night you got to go to play against it some is. of the greatest in the, Some, in the league, too. Something's different every day. You know, it is. It is. Uh, um, it's a, a great experience, obviously. Um, but, you know, the, the, the best thing about it is the game of basketball. To be able to every night go out and showcase your talent and just have fun and come to camaraderie with the guys. And in the locker room after, you know what I mean? All that, all that good stuff that comes with it, you know. And how's, how's traveling, like, how's away game? Do you go, like, the day before or the day of the game, or how is it working? day before. We, we show up the day before. Make sure you're going to get, get, get a, get a, a, a nice sleep. Depending if we, um, so you might have a, a back-to-back. You yeah. have to leave after the game. Stay, to stay over in the city and fly back. Um, is it all private jet? Yeah, we, yeah. we have a... It's the size of a regular, uh, you know, yeah, um, you know, first class passenger plane. But um, we have there's no overhead luggage compartments. Um, there's uh, two tables in the front, only uh, big, you know, first class seats all the way through it. There's really you no, get to PSA and all that. We, 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 <laughs> we, right we drive right up to the on right next to the plane. The plane is yeah. 50 feet away. Early in your career, like, were you ever tempted by like the the flashing lights and stuff like that? Did you ever have moments where you just like oh, kind of lost focus of the game a little? Of bit? course, <laughs> of course. Uh, and uh, playing in New York was one of those times. I was only there for two months, and that was probably one of the craziest times. Um, I mean, it, it happens, you know, your environment, the people, um, you know, what's going on in the team. If you're winning, if you're losing. A lot of you know things contribute to that, but uh, it's all in all, you know, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> no, honestly, I wouldn't. You know, it's not no. Well, you play for quite a bit, quite a bit of teams. Like, would you say that there's a team that you would pick that like this was the best time I had? Portland. I ain't gonna lie, that, that was my favorite team. Um, that was my first time getting traded, so it hurt. Um, but honestly, it was, it was my favorite group of guys. It was my favorite. City to be in. Um, I mean, I had Joe Perk, Philip, Juan Howard, yeah, um, Marcus Candy. <laughs> uh, Steve Blake here. Steve Blake might play. I might have missed that one. I mean, I mean, all type, all type oh of guys. God, it's just great guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> Martel Webster. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, just great, great guys to be around and to show me, you know, what the league is about. You know, taught me, you know, professionalism, how to carry yourself on and off the court, you know what I mean, and all that, that matters, you know what I mean, to stick around and get in the league, you know what I mean. Yeah, I always wonder, like, because there's probably a, a contrast between some of the teams where there's a lot of younger guys mm-hmm. versus, like, somewhere like the Spurs where it's, like, real fundamental. Did, did you notice a lot of difference in the play style? Or? It, that, that all comes from the organization, you know, the, um, you know, Spurs are obviously more student type type of organization, you know, they keep veteran guys around, um, Older guys that retired there stay around and come back and work out there. You know, they, they keep that older professional, super professional um, environment around. Um, you know, other teams, you know, they try to do that, but, you know, in situations, you know, they come in and have trades or whatever and draft picks, and they got a whole bunch of young guys. So now they got to kind of work with that. You know? That makes sense. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to uh, getting drafted or, like, Get it traded. Is there any kind of negotiations that happen when it comes to like the actual payment? Like, how do how do basketball players get payment? Just for anybody like outside of the league that don't know. Just like you, <laughs> first in the fifteenth. <laughs> nah, you, you can get, you can bust it down however you want. You can get paid twelve months, uh, twelve months out of the year. You can get paid twice a month, once a month. You can get paid six months. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you, can, you, you can. You can negotiate your your time. You can get eighty percent up front, or how'd you do it? Did, did you want to get paid throughout the whole year? So yeah, when I, not, when you yeah, yeah. Well, I actually I did that my first year at Ricky. I, I messed up. I was like, yeah, you get six months. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, look at, that <laughs> your, like, look at that your account. Look at that you pulling out. Ain't nothing coming in. You're like, dang. Yeah, be the halfway point. How much longer? Yeah. So talking about you know when you got money, because that's how I met you. You know, so mm-hmm. I met him through uh, our insurance guy, Jake. The country financial invited me to uh, the Post Malone concert, yeah. and he had a sweet box. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met you. He said, Hey, this is Dante, you know, he has cars, you know, so I want to detail stuff. 
I want your house. We'll talk about that too because I love your house. It's yeah, your whole property you own. <laughs> but your car, so you told me your first all-star check, you bought that one car you had over there. You still have it, right? Yep. Uh, what was it's outside it? outside of uh, well, my, mom, my mom's house right now. It's a 1971 Color Supreme with a 450, 454. Yeah. Well, you're so right. big by 71, 1971. And you say you bought that with your first all-star check? My fir- no, my first playoff check. Oh, playoff check. Sorry. Play- I didn't make the all-star. Sorry, sorry. Playoff. <laughs> playoff. Uh, my first playoff check from here, went home, uh, got on the internet and found that car. <laughs> yeah. Was it the full check by any chance or no? No. How much was that check? I think I think we made like that year like 20, 25 or something like oh. that. I think we were like the sixth or, or eighth or seventh seed or something like that. We didn't get that much. That and then we got kicked out of the first round. So. And then you also had, when I made you, had the, a couple Hellcats, a few Hellcats. <laughs> then you had a Bentley. Oh, he you had a Bentley. <laughs> so when you when you first started getting money, like, because now you don't have that stuff, right? you got rid of it. You told me, you know, like, there's no point in having that. It's just waste of money. I mean, Bentley, well, obviously. Well, yeah, yeah. Because, okay. like, it's yes, like, yes. it costs you so cars, much money. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so are you I've done? Learned, I've learned um, the kind of cars and what cars. So, like, what what are you, what what's the point of the car? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was great to drive. The, the Bentley drove great. It was, you know, fast and everything. But once the warranty went out, like I said, the windshield, <laughs> the, for them to look at it, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's a lot. Like, nah, I'm good. I don't even. <laughs> not even, <laughs> yeah, I don't not even, no yeah, more. Not even yeah. the type of car I want. And plus, I'm a, I'm American muscle type of guy. Anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still got my Hellcats. I still got... Uh, you know, that Lincoln. So, yeah. so that six feet Hellcat is really rare. You mm-hmm. never drive the manual. Yeah. The challenger, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, with your property, you own how many acres over there? Uh, 67. Six, seven acres. Yeah. And you have a horse thing. Uh, you have a barn, right? I do horse boarding. So, boarding. So, that's what mm-hmm. I want to get to. So, that's a business that you got into. Like, how long ago was have you gotten into that? What was that? 19? 2019? Okay. Mm-hmm. What made you get into that? Just because you have big property? Or? So. Long story short, I started out with 20 acres. Okay. Um, next property, the property to next to me came up for availability, bought that. Um, again, the next thing happened. So I ended up with 67 out of nowhere uh, within like two years. Okay. The goal of what I've learned was to make things like that, make its own money so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. So at 67 acres, you have taxes, you have maintenance and grass, mm-hmm. um, which is which is a lot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, understatement. But the horses pay for the whole thing, the whole property. So mm-hmm. as long as I have the horse business going, I have a place to stay. My mom has a place to stay. My son has a place to stay. And the horse business, as in you just board them, people pay I just you. board. Yeah. People pay you money. Every so if you had a day. horse and you know what I mean, you didn't want to keep him, I just send you to the garage. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> the horse, the horsey hotel. Yeah, yeah <laughs> full full care. You know, I feed them, let them out, everything, everything for them. Yeah. That's so weird because I see your Instagram post all the time. The mm-hmm. one, uh, your person that works for you, the lady that exactly. manages it, is yeah. always posting on there, and it's dope to see like the horses all the time. Out yeah, about. no, she's she's, yeah, she's she's great. Um, I get nothing but great uh, feedback from all of our um, you know boarders, and honestly, it's all her. She she really just. And what else do you do? Because I saw she also posted something about you're sponsoring something recently. Um, I just sponsored a a, a barrel race for the kids. Okay. Um. At the uh, Saddle Club in uh, Washington, uh, that was cool. I've been out two years now. Yeah. Um, you know, just anything that kind of, you know, give back to the kids, help them out. Um, I also have cows. I have beef cows. So, <laughs> you know, if you need beef, hamburgers, <laughs> and, and you have the one big pig. <laughs> um, I have pigs and goats. Yeah, no, no. Um, I do hay. I don't sell the hay. The hay just goes to my animals. So, for animals only. Mm-hmm. so is that something that's always been kind of in you? Because I know like a lot of NBA players, you know, the the, the glam and the glitz is, is nice for a little while, but you always seem like you were kind of more like reserved, like out the way. You kind of wanted to just like res- like chill, right? I always, <laughs> that knew, I always knew that I wanted my own little piece of the world. You yeah. know, just my dad always told me they they gon' they never gonna make more land. You know, so you need to get your piece. So, yeah. Um, I always knew that, and I always knew I wanted animals. Just watching Discovery Channel, you know. I grew up, I grew up in Maryland, DC. You know, so I'm a, I'm a city boy at heart. But um, you know, learning every day, every day, more country, and you're on a farm. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to do, business wise, on your property, or just you know, boarding for the horse? You want to add to it, like make it bigger, or anything like that? Or? Go kart, like go kart track. <laughs> <laughs> he has a dirt bike. Or he has I, a dirt I do have a dirt bike track in the yeah. back, um, but 
honestly, just more business needs to add to it. Um, uh, I do have my uh, dealer's license to buy and sell cars, um, so that that is an option I was exploring. But you signed a year for overseas plane, right? Right. So, so you, you know, these are things that you know I'm trying to, I guess, have a, a shell ready for yeah. when I'm done. And it's dope how when you leave overseas mm -hmm. for all those months you're gone, your property taken care of. Exactly. You know, you're still, like, still running so just like a top. Yep. Yeah. I'll be able to do that. They can go and like, okay, and shut it down. Yeah, I, 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 that, <laughs> that was that was one thing I, I had to have in place. I have to have that running 24/7. Yeah, no matter what. Probably. Yeah, we've been up to the DC compound. It's, yeah. it's a nice little spot, bro. Yeah, you got mentioned overseas. Like, let's kind of talk about overseas. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about overseas. Yeah, I want to talk about overseas. Yeah, because like. That's a whole other world, I, I can imagine. Is it like is it kind of similarly structured as like the NBA playing in there, or is it just like <laughs> way different? Basketball has many faces. Basketball is a it's a learning, evolving sport. Um, at the age of thirty six, I've been playing since I was four, uh, over thirty years now. And honestly, every year, every time I go to a new place, new country, obviously, it's a uh, it's new. Basketball is new. Um, over there, you know, just the way they play, how they play, how they practice is totally different. Um, two a days, four, five times a week, easy. Is that, is that easy. more? Is that more training? Like, more? Mo morning, weight, shooting, afternoon, full practice, four or five times a week, easy. So how many months of the year is that? Um, so there's, I guess, a few different seasons, but um, I've done one for 10 months, and I'll never go back overseas for 10 months because that's obviously too long. Yeah. I don't know what um, I have the Korean League is six months, playoffs is a month, so seven months total if you make the playoffs. So, better trade off. This is my life. So how is it living there? Like, when you first moved there, was it like, like, the whole culture is different, obviously, like, even spending money is different, you know what I'm saying? So right. how did you get, like, did you have to have some kind of guide to help you out? So or luckily you, uh, in Korea um, and in China when I went there, they, they do give you a driver and a um, translator that's with you pretty much anytime you go outside. But, I mean, obviously culture is different. Um, way they move, the way they talk, the how they get around. Organized chaos driving is what I call it. Like, <laughs> that's I can only really imagine. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. You know, food is different. Um, I don't want to get into that because I don't want to get in trouble, but uh, <laughs> okay. the, the food is great over there. We just got to, you know, they, here in America, there's things that we're allowed to put in our food that over there they won't even allow in their country. When it comes to, like, playing at a professional level, when it comes to sports, like, you really got to have your, your mental in order. What is some of the, like, the, the principles you live by when it comes to being competitive in a sport? And how do you find yourself, like, how do you achieve? It's very disciplined. Um, wanting to do, you know, things that others don't want to do. Um, like Tyson actually said, that he said discipline is doing things that you don't like, like you love them. That is discipline. So if it's, you know, sprinting every day after practice, do it like you love it every day. Um, I had to, to learn how to, you know, continue to take care of my body, uh, especially as I got older. Hydrating water is the number one thing for me right now. Stay hydrated. Uh, if, 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 if you get to any athlete, water. Just water. Your body is what, you know, some percent of it. Water. Your body needs water. Um, eating right, not burning the candle on both ends, meaning going out, you know, and partying and then trying to go to practice in the morning. I mean, it does feel good when you're 20 something younger, but sometimes it kills you. It kills you at the end. Um, yeah, I wish I could take back a couple of nights, a couple of years actually. <laughs> a couple of years, but it's, 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 again, it's, 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 it's a balance, you know, you gotta have fun with it, you gotta enjoy the experiences that, you know, come with the sport, you know what I mean? Like, it's literally my vehicle to the world, it's just let me travel the world, let me take care of my family, um, it's allowed me to experience life differently. In a way that I, you know, can't imagine, still imagine. Playing on a team, in a team sport, there's a lot of different things that you kind of have to master, especially when you come from playing the one-on-one games or mm -hmm. in a crunch at the, at the park or something. How does, for somebody who's kind of newer to, to, like, maybe playing at a, a higher level, what is, some of your, what is some of your advice for them to, like, play better within your team system? Just play. Whatever it is, play. If it's pick up, if it's three on three, one on one, you have to put yourself in scenarios all the time. As an athlete in any sport, the best the best athletes don't think they react. And the only thing that you know can uh, to allow you to you know play and play free, play like you know Steph and Jordan, LeBron, everyone like that, they don't think they react. They're in the gym, they shoot all day, every day, all 
your scraps. So it becomes like a you know, so, so it's literally what they do. They grab the ball and shoot the ball. You know what I mean? That, that's what they do. It's a reaction. And that's how you have to play. That's how you have to be professional and be of the game. Is there any players or coaches along your journey that like really had a big effect on you or became a mentor to your to uh, your journey? For sure. Um, like I said, my first year here, um, Jawan Howard and Joe Kirk Villa, my, my 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 two um, veteran guys. Uh, Jawan Howard just taught me how to be a professional um, off the court, and like on the court during practice, uh, understanding that they're investing a lot of money into you. They know a lot about you. They know a lot about you off the court, too. So don't, you know, think that just because you're think out. They you know what I'm saying? Don't, <laughs> they, they're investing in you. It's just a be professional at all times. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's going to help you out in the long run. Uh, being respectful, you know what I mean? Understanding, you know, the ladder of the people, like, who's on top. You know what I mean? Understanding, you know, know who they are because sometimes they look like, you know, the video guys. Yeah. Even still, if it is the video guy, you know, same stuff all the way across, you know. Yeah. Um, just being able to be around the league uh, is definitely a tool that a lot of guys need to learn. Sure. Yeah, like how important is it for you to be like, when you're a team, when you're pretty much like out and about, maybe like a nightclub and stuff like that, how important is it for you at the time to be like special, even though like you're not gaining at the time? Like you still, no matter what, you have to uphold some kind of, you know, yeah. status because you're part of the team, you know? Right. I mean, you're, you're always representing an organization. Even if you're not working. Even if it's the summertime. Yeah. Like, even now, um, I'm still, I, I signed the contract, so I'm representing someone to every second in South Korea, technically. You know, what I do here is still protect the rest of them. So, like, you know, like, right. you give like some last impression to you know what I mean? Yeah, you're going to speak it I was kind of curious, like, as a player, how do you, how do you do that? Like, every, you know. How do you, How do you do it? It's usually pull it out in the face and just, you know, show it on camera. I mean, that, that, that's not the, the issue. The problem here is the problem is that the young kid is around his environment and people around him that, that aren't, you know, pulling him in the right direction and telling him, no, no, that's not, that's not the move. You know what I mean? Like, why do you, why do you even have it? You know what I mean? Like, at the minimum, but again, it's, it's that day and age where literally you look at something that you twice been doing that you could have done 15 years ago. Yeah. And don't yeah, because you're, you're at a different level, mm -hmm. you represent different teams and different people, and you count a different check now. <laughs> and you know, he's still young. I, I imagine he still has, you know. He's still making go for No, he, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be fine in the situation. Um, again, he had to cut out a lot of people around him. Mm -hmm. Just, um, you know, get some old, older, veteran guys in, in, in his ear and, you know, continue to hope they listen. <laughs> right, and they'll listen. Just, you know, take their advice. Yeah, man. I think, uh, so just, just in closing, I wanted to ask you, uh, what, what, what advice, what further advice would you have for anybody who just want to go into a, uh, playing for like a professional league, whether that's the NBA or any kind of sport? The biggest thing is, is honestly, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dice roll. Like, for you to make it mm -hmm. to a professional team for the NBA, it's a dice roll. Like, yes, you can be, I, there's three or four guys out on my high school team or in the, in the league with me growing up, college that were way better than me. More athletic, taller, shoot better, jump higher. Um, it's a dice roll. The best thing that you can do, your own best advice, is to continue to, continue to work as hard as you possibly can. Um, it's in God's hands, honestly. You know, you can do all the work you possibly can in the world and then step off a curveball. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, just, it's, it's just a dice roll. It, it really I don't know, if, you know, yeah. what more I can really say to that, but. Um, just, just work hard, you know. Give yourself the best odds you can. If you be the best person you can. Odd you, you can do, you know, just be smart, you know, in every situation. Um, and let, let basketball, you know, be your be your fun life. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you for sure, man. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, is there anything you want to promote for the people right now? Oh, no, nah, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, DC Compound. On Instagram. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
that needs some boarding. <laughs> or, uh, I think we're full right now. <laughs> Thank you.